This training is divided into five segments. The introduction briefly covers the eligibility and requirements to enroll in the course and earn the license. We present a short summary of the profile of the referee mentor and the course guide. We will also introduce the referee coach pathway, U.S. soccer sports development education philosophy, and the referee pathway. In the next three segments, we explore how the PEACE model is applied when practicing the tasks or key qualities of the referee mentor, namely leading field session practical exercises, leading video analysis sessions, and observing the performance of match officials with the grassroots license. Finally, in the last segment, we touch upon the latest changes and clarifications on IFAB's loss of the game and practical guidelines. We are glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy the Referee Mentor Licensing Course online training component. To earn the Referee Mentor License, you must complete an online training in the U.S. Soccer Learning Center and the in-person meeting with the Member Association State Referee Committee, or SRC. In addition, the candidate must complete the risk management training in the Learning Center. You've likely met the first three requirements in this chart to be enrolled in the licensing course. Currently, you're working on the online component and you've likely selected an upcoming in-person meeting hosted and led by one of the member association SRCs. Regarding the risk management, you've likely already passed the NCSI background check. We recommend that you complete the Safe Sport and Safe and Healthy Playing Environments online training seven days prior to the in-person meeting. The online training also includes a loss of the game test and a couple of quizzes as assignments. Finally, the course moves from an online environment to an in-person meeting in which the candidate must complete three assignments. In this chart, you see the requirements to renew your license. You'll need to hold an active referee mentor license, complete an online refresher, and have completed a minimum of three assignments prior to the expiration of a current referee mentor license. For more information, review the eligibility and requirements in the course guide, which can be found in the resources folder for the online training component. Here, we begin to focus on two important resource documents that will help you understand and enhance your licensing experience. The profile of the referee mentor and the referee mentor course guide are crucial for this course, and you must invest time reading and reviewing these documents throughout the course in both the online and in-person components. The profile defines the role of the referee mentor, including the performing environment, namely mentoring grassroots referees in youth and adult competitions. The purpose of the job, for example, facilitating, contributing, and inspiring grassroots referees in learning and development of their officiating skills. And the responsibilities, such as preparing, performing, and reflecting to enhance each mentoring opportunity towards excellence. In addition, the profile clearly outlines and describes each of the tasks and processes or key qualities of the referee mentor. The first task is leading field sessions, under which three processes are expected to be learned, practiced, and applied by the candidates. The PEACE model is an instructional method used to engage your audience with the content in the learning environment in which the candidate develops and applies their platform skills. For this task, the corresponding assignment or activity 
is designed to be carried out on the field with referees using their tools and with teams with youth or adult players that the referees will officiate games for in the season. The decision-making process for a referee involves seeing the player's actions, interpreting these actions, and clearly communicating the decision. For every task in the profile, the referee mentor must reflect on his or her performance of the task to celebrate and reinforce own successes and good habits and to build upon or enhance items that did not go as planned. Self-reflection is key to learning and development. Take a look at the basic questions for each of the piece model components. For some, this serves as an introduction, and for others, as a review of the concept. Pause the video as needed to allow for more time to review. Remember, more detailed information is found in the resources folder for this course. Also, review the information on the slide to increase your understanding on the concept of reflection. As before, you can pause the video as needed to allow for more time to review. Remember, more detailed information is found in the course guide, which can be downloaded from the resources folder for this course. As you can see, the processes under leading video analysis, the second task of the profile, are the same as before. In addition, here we've included understanding the game as an emphasis in the second task and related assignments. Review the information on this slide to increase your understanding on aspects of the process of understanding the game. As before, you can pause the video as needed to allow for more time to review. For more information, invest time reading the profile of the referee mentor, which can be downloaded from the resources folder in this course. Take a look again at the basic question for each of the piece model components. Very small difference when compared to applying the piece model for leading field session practical exercises. Remember, more detailed information is found in the resource folder for this course. Compared with the previous two tasks, we introduce three processes under observing the performance of match officials. These include taking notes during the game to identify positive points and areas for improvement for each referee. Facilitating the post-game reflection with the referees and discussing the positives and improvements for the next game. And understanding their role and connecting with the referees. Review the information on this slide to increase your understanding on aspects of the process of observing the performance of referees. As before, you can pause the video as needed to allow for more time to review. For more information, invest time reading the profile of the referee mentor, which can be found and downloaded from the resources folder in this course. We've introduced and reviewed the role or the job of the referee mentor and the task and processes or key qualities that candidates must be aware and inform about to understand and develop their skills onto applying when engaging referees. For more detailed information, download and review the profile of the referee mentor 
under resources for this course. Next, we introduce the Referee Mentor Course Guide resource document. The second document important to understand the format of this licensing course is the course guide. This course guide is based on the profile and provides general information on the course as well as detailed information for assignments including deadlines. You can download this document from the resources in this course to review and find out more. The general information includes short segments on the topics you see here. For example, the course objectives, the attendance policy, and the course content. Review the information in the course guide prior to the in-person meeting. We've also included a small description of reflection for you to continue understanding what we mean and to start or continue using a book of experience or reflection journal to practice and document self-reflection during the course and beyond. You'll also find more details and due dates regarding assignments. We recommend that you invest time reading the course guide in preparation for your training as well as referencing the document as needed during the performance of each of your assignments. This information will help you increase your understanding of what the course entails. Remember, you can download this document from the resources in this course to review and find out more. This concludes this segment of the Referee Mentor Course Introduction. We presented the requirements and eligibility for the licensing course and two important documents that will help you guide your licensing experience. Once more, take time to read and review these two important documents as needed. In the next segment, of our introduction, we will briefly introduce the Referee Coach Pathway, which starts with the Referee Mentor. We discuss more about the purpose, performance environment, and responsibilities of the Referee Mentor to answer the question, what it means to be a Referee Mentor. We also share with you the basics of the U.S. Soccer Sports Development Education Philosophy. Finally, we review the referee pathway to add context to the important role of the referee mentor. So, what do you know about the new Referee Coach Pathway. What have you heard from your peers, SRC, and or U.S. Soccer? The next segment will address the basics. The Referee Coach Pathway starts with a Referee Mentor. With this license, you're able to officially work with referees with a grassroots license. Before, during, and after their games, in their performing environments. Licensed U.S. Soccer Referee Mentors train grassroots referees by facilitating a fair, fun, and safe environment conducive for learning during field session practical exercises, video analysis sessions, and observing performance at games. As a referee mentor, you'll learn about the PEACE teaching model gain experience, further develop yourself, and enjoy mentoring 
to enhance the officiating skills of referees. The next category on the referee coach pathway is the coaching regional referees as a licensed U.S. soccer referee coach. To succeed at this level, you must first gain experience and confidence in the task of the referee mentor and in two additional key qualities, facilitating the post-game reflection with the referee team and writing the feedback based on match officials' performance. You'll need to take the U.S. Soccer Referee Coach course and successfully complete the assignments to earn this license. U.S. Soccer license national referee coaches coach and train national match officials that can work any professional game besides Division I. Once at this category, you master all five tasks or key qualities and apply teaching tools to engage referee audiences at all levels. In this segment of our introduction, we discuss more about the performance environment, the purpose of the job, and responsibilities of the referee mentor. Regarding the performance environment, the referee mentor mentors U.S. soccer grassroots referees in youth and adult competitions, facilitates referee education sessions sponsored by the competition, youth or adult, state referee programs, and or U.S. soccer. Collaborates with competitions, state referee programs, and or U.S. soccer in training new or experienced grassroots referees. Engages grassroots referees using an interactive and integrative dialogue to guide and support their development. And engages with peers to reflect on own performances by offering and accepting feedback. Regarding the purpose of the job, the referee mentor contributes in the development of U.S. soccer grassroots referees, inspires match officials to self-develop and to improve from game to game, facilitates a fair, fun, and safe environment conducive of learning where grassroots referees and referee mentors engage in training. Facilitates understanding and application of the laws of the game for grassroots referees and referee mentors. Provides constructive feedback about performance of grassroots referees to create a positive learning experience. Every opportunity to mentor referees presents unique challenges to learn more about your audience of referees, their strengths, and areas for improvement, as well as to reflect about your own performance of the task in your mentoring role. The course is here to guide you on this journey and is designed for new referee mentors as well as those with years of experience. Which of the following choices do you think are responsibilities of the referee mentor? Preparing prior to the session, offering constructive feedback, inspiring referees to self-develop, facilitating understanding and application of the laws of the game. Or perhaps you think one or more of the following choices also apply. Applying the peace teaching model when engaging referees, guiding and reviewing the decision-making process, understanding the profile of the grassroots referee, and reflecting and documenting self-reflection. You are correct if you selected all of the previous choices, since these are all responsibilities of the referee mentor. This licensing online training will offer information and give you the tools needed to confidently carry out each responsibility 
and have fun while mentoring referees with a grassroots license. In this segment of our introduction, we share with you the basics of our education philosophy. Get ready to learn about and embrace the U.S. Soccer Sports Development Education Philosophy. It consists of three pillars. Reality-based learning. In our case, the game is what drives behavior, decision-making, and reflection of the referee. The decision-making is based on what the referee sees on the field, how the player's actions are interpreted, and the rationale to stop the game or allow it to continue as justified or supported by the loss of the game. Holistic approach refers to the input and consideration of all interconnected aspects of the game, including the referee and the desired outcome. Experiential learning refers to the evaluation, analysis, and reflection of experiences to develop competencies as a referee and improve behavior. Where the experience involves a hands-on activity or exercise and not simply listening in a lecture style setting. The experiential learning cycle is an important concept in education. It is an active, hands-on, learner-based approach where students undergo an experience, reflect upon it, practice to develop skills, and then apply them. This methodology is carried out in a meaningful and relevant manner to benefit the candidates. You can think of it as a spiral. Each of you bring with you past experiences. Some of you may be more comfortable with leading a field session compared with giving feedback after the game, or vice versa. As you practice performing each of these tasks, you can pick up or note patterns in your own performance as well as in those from your peers. You reflect on your performance of the task with peers and on your own to gain new information. This will be different for each candidate based on various factors, such as past experience, confidence, environment, understanding, etc. Each of you then has the choice to practice new or refined skills by creating and carrying out a plan of action to get better. Finally, each of you would apply your enhanced knowledge and skills in the next experience. Some of the advantages of experiential learning include real-time coaching and feedback in an in-person meeting, development of reflective practice habits, quick application of knowledge and skills, and observe success and areas for improvement. This is how we increase competency. This is how we learn over time. It's an important aspect of our lifelong journey. In this segment of our introduction, we review the referee pathway to add context to the important role of the referee mentor. Since July 2019, the new referee pathway has been in effect aiming to clarify the referee journey from grassroots to the highest level of the game and to eliminate barriers of entry for those wishing to participate as referees. Each of the referee licenses are also based on individual profiles that describe the performance environment, purpose, and responsibility of the role. Your audience is the largest in the country, 
These are referees with a grassroots license. Review the profile of the grassroots referee to understand their task or key qualities, namely preparing for the game, officiating the game, managing post-game activities, and reflecting on their performance. Under each of these tasks, there are several processes subdivided into actions and competencies that grassroots referees can work on from game to game. Having a clear understanding of your audience will allow you to identify the appropriate content and to facilitate an environment conducive to learning and to effectively deliver material in alignment with U.S. Soccer's education philosophy. You'll likely work with new and or returning grassroots referees that officiate recreational or competitive youth or adult small-sided to 11v11 games. Your approach to engage the audience will be flexible since you'll find yourself interacting with teenagers and young or seasoned adults at various times or within the same group. You'll help and advise them so that over time they will become proficient in refereeing games that are fair, fun, and safe for all the participants, players, coaches, and referees. This concludes the introduction. In this segment, we cover the referee coach pathway and its three licenses. Remember, it starts with the referee mentor. We asked what it means for you to be a referee mentor and what your goals are in the referee coach pathway. You have been informed about three pillars of US soccer sports development education philosophy and the four tasks or key qualities of the grassroots referee. Earlier in the introduction, we review the requirements for the referee mentor license, as well as two important resource documents that will help enhance your licensing experience, the profile of the referee mentor and the referee mentor course guide. Up next, you'll engage in the next assignment that focuses on one of the tasks and processes or key qualities as a referee mentor, leading field sessions.